In this video, we're going to dive into how shutter speed affects how your video looks, specifically how motion is captured and it is played back and is viewed. So the rule of thumb is that you should always try to double the sh frame rate and that's going to be your shutter speed. So for example, if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you should shoot at 1 over 48. If you're shooting 29.97 frames per second or 30 frames per second, you should set your shutter speed to 1 over 60. And the reason is because how the video is captured at those shutter speeds and at those frame rates will look sort of natural, similar to how you see it with your human eye. The motion blur that is captured is a naturalistic motion blur. And so right now I'm shooting at 24 frames per second or technically 2398. I've got this nice little pinwheel next to me and we're shooting at 1 48th frames per second. So we're following the rule of thumb and as I spin this, you should be able to see quite a bit of motion blur, and that's natural. If I'm just looking at this myself, I'm not seeing every single individual movement as it moves micrometer, millimeter by micromillimeter. I don't know if that's a word, but I'm seeing motion blur with my eye. And so if you are shooting at 1 48th shutter speed, you're going to get some natural motion blur as well. Similarly, another reason we shoot at those shutter speeds with those frame rates doubling is for the motion of our lips. So pay attention as I talk through this video, as I change the shutter speed, the lip sync or the way that you see and hear my, my voice compared to my lips might look a little off when I crank up the shutter speed. So I'm gonna pause the video and we're going to crank up our shutter speed and keep going up and up and up. All right, so now I'm shooting at 1 1 25th shutter speed. I've had to adjust some of my other settings to compensate. So right now I just changed the aperture and the ISO on my camera. I could also bring up my lights, but that's more about exposure. Now let's look at this again and see what it looks like. So 1 1 25th. And I'll do a side by side comparison so you can see the motion of the 1 48th shutter speed versus 1 1 25th. You should probably see it a little bit clearer. There's not as much motion blur. All right. All right, so now I'm at 1 1,000th of a shutter speed. This is something that you would rarely want to do if you were shooting video, but let's look at the motion again. So now you are capturing the motion and you are getting very little motion blur. And we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison again to see what this looks like compared to the other two. All right, now I've cranked it up one last time to one four thousandth shutter speed. I've cranked up my light as bright as it could go. I boosted my ISO to 2000 and my aperture I've dropped down to 1.8. So let's do one more test. So now you understand and can see the difference between shooting at different shutter speeds. And if you are stuck on shooting at one frame rate, Cranking up your shutter speed is one way to get clearer motion. And this is something that some video directors want to achieve. Saving Private Ryan in that opening scene is a great example of shooting at a higher shutter speed to get that super clear, crisp, almost staccato motion captured rather than having a lot of motion blur. It's a stylistic effect. Typically, you're not going to want to do this because sometimes playing back at super high shutter speeds, it can almost feel a little glitchy and, and wonky. And especially if you're shooting someone talking, their lips might not sync perfectly or it might feel a little off compared to what your audience is hearing. 
That being said, it is a stylistic choice and that's what you can use shutter speed for. Now sometimes you might just be stuck out in the field on a bright sunny day shooting with whatever equipment, lens, camera you have and the only way to expose properly is to increase your shutter speed. If you don't have an ND filter, if you don't or can't crank up your f-stop to make lower your exposure, cranking up your shutter speed might be the only way to expose properly. And now you know what the result will be. The motion will be captured differently. And so that's important for you to understand and why getting something like an ND variable filter is a great tool to have so that you have more control of the look of your video. The last thing I want to mention though is there's a difference between shooting at a high shutter speed compared to a higher frame rate. We've learned in other videos that shooting at a higher frames per second or frame rate can also capture motion more clear or crisp. Compare a 24 frames per second shot to a 60 frame per second shot, you get clearer motion. The difference is that internally, the camera, when you're shooting at a high frame rate, is literally capturing more frames per second and squeezing it into that second. And there's more information in there, making it a clearer image. And ultimately, I think a better way to shoot a clearer image if you want to capture high, fast motion in that clear way without a lot of motion blur. Compare that to shooting at a shutter, higher shutter speed. If you're still shooting at 24 frames per second, for example, with a cranked up shutter speed, you still only have those frames, but the amount of time each frame is exposed is shorter. That's what shutter speed is. You're increasing or decreasing the amount of time each frame is exposed or captured. And that can end up looking a little bit wonky as we've seen in this video and as you might see if you shoot at a high shutter speed. Now the other thing to consider is that you might need to film and edit on a certain frame rate. Sometimes depending on where you're distributing your film or who you're making your film for or your videos for, they might want you to only film at 24 frames per second or edit on 24 frames per second. And so you might not have the option to increase the frames rate. And while it's fairly easy and most modern editing applications can use multiple frame rates on the same editing sequence nowadays, it can get a little funky combining a bunch of different frame rates on the same sequence. And so that would be a time where perhaps increasing your shutter speed to capture crisp motion is the alternative you want. All right, so I know this is a lot of information, but I hope that visually you are able to see the differences and just having that understanding now allows you to stick to the rules or break the rules for your own creative purposes. Thank you so much for watching.